mean? Okay, so we are, yeah, we are yeah. above the global average. And by by underlining this result, the ICAO removed us from significant safety concern, SSC. And at that time, then a minister, let me, Ravindra Adhikari, received the there, they might have their own concern. As a sovereign state, as a sovereign country, we do oblique to the ICAO regulation, not EU regulation. Okay? Because if the EU listed as per the list of the SSC, when ICAO out from the SSC, okay, ICAO made out from the SSC, the EU should also made out from the same list. Okay. But it uh, cannot happen like that. Okay? Around 110 activities, domestic, internationals, big swing, a rotor, we witnessed the 110 extent and 965 people, they became the victim. Hello and welcome to another episode of Travel Trade Talk on Nepal Travel, Traveler.com. Our weekly episode of Travel Talks with stakeholders from the industry. And today we are at this amazing new building of the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal. And we are in conversation with Mr. Gyaninder Bull, the spokesperson of Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal. Welcome to our show, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So also looking at the airport yeah. festive season has arrived. Also, the high season has arrived. Yeah. And TIA has faced issues of congestion. Yeah. What kind of uh, plans do we have for managing this problem? Uh, if we talk about the instant, very first day of the TIA, it was started from the 1949. At that time, that was just a grassy land. That was called Gauch. I mean, yeah. There was no any runway. There was just a one land. And the aircraft used to land by hovering and by making the catters, okay, other domestic animals to scare out and they used to yeah. have the land there. But when the time um, gone, okay, again, when the time gone, at that time in 1955, we made the one payment. We made the one payment uh, having length 3,750 feet mm -hmm. at the TIA. After that one, we again upgraded the airport in 1968, again means we upgraded the airport recently on 2012. Mm -hmm. By that capacity, now TIA have the 10,000 feet long mm -hmm. runway and 150 feet wide having width runway. Okay, And that capacity, as a single runway capacity, the TIA is now handling 32 moments per hour. That is the optimum capacity. Because if we can talk about the maximum capacity of the single runway in the world, 48 or 50 is the topmost yeah. capacity. That is the handling capacity of the um, Jewish, uh, I mean, in the airport of the Sing Germany and that of the airport, Mumbai airport, Satavadi Sivaji airport. So far, okay, if you look the aeronautical data, 55 movements per hour is the maximum handling yes, yes. capacity of the single runway, provided that, provided the availability of the all kind of the communication, navigation, and uh, other facilities intact, but in case of the Nepal, there is not so. As a single runway of the TIA, they are handling the heterogeneous traffic from 19 seater to 380. We are handling here, and they have the and we are surrounded by the hilltops. Yeah, we have the on approach limitation, on departure limitation. And there is only instrument departure and arrival from runway 02, mean from the south part. south part. Okay. And there is only arrival from the south part. And other VFR traffic, they can land from the both runway. But if we talk about the IFR flight, they can land from the runway 02. And if there is a if there are the there, there is the departure from runway 20, so, mean north part, and the aircraft is arriving from the south, that is the reciprocal traffic. At that time, 10 minutes separation is needed. I mean, 
complexity of the types of the traffic and if there is the slow departure traffic already departed we have to stop the fast departing traffic mm -hmm. yeah in such case mean uh, there are the different air traffic service principles and there are the different horizontal separation and vertical separation rule and whatever be there the minimum separation should be the 10 nautical mile horizontal separation oh. yeah and there may be the lateral and longitudinal also there may be the different ways and a 1000 feet should be the vertical separation to keep that one and to maintain the all the separation minima yeah the tia capacity on the ifr is the nine movements per hour international traffic if we can calculate total now there is the 32 movements per hour I mean from the gausser to so far the tia capacity is continuously upgrading we are upgrading the capacity but problem is that there is a limited territorial area yes. yeah outside that one at the 1949, when the airport was initiated, this airport was at the corner of the city. Yeah, this was at the corner of the city. Now, it's by fine. developing the human settlement and by the organization, now the airport became at the center yes. of the city. So this is the problem. Yeah. Now the TIA capacity, the international uh, terminal have the 1500 passenger per hour, domestic have the 700 passenger per hour, but they are exceeding their capacity. Domestic handling around 1200 and international handling around 2200 per hour. And total capacity of the airport is the around 8 million per year. But we are handling around 9.5 million. This year we are projected to cross to reach up to 100 million. I mean, 9.5, I mean 10 million. 10 million. Okay. So that's why means we are doing how much we can do okay, as per our capacity, as per the state capacity, as per our financial capacity we are doing as much as best but the demand of the passenger is okay. increasing one, one geometric ratio and we are doing on the arithmetic ratio so that's why unless the development of the Nizar <coughs> international airport as a mega airport will not be materialized okay at that time there will be the some kind of the air transport constant at the TIA and uh, as an authority, as an airport operator and as a regulator, we are doing to make the that kind of the facilitation so much we can do, okay? Means? Sir, what about the two airports that were supposed to assist the traffic of TI, uh, Pokhara International Airport and uh, Bairava, to at least manage the regional yeah. traffic and things? So, initially, uh, this is the uh, one kind of the matter of offset and a matter of proud also, two things, okay? From the single airport, we reached now three international airports. This is the matter of proud because as you also might know this incident of the uh, Turkish Airlines, there was the runway excursion uh, at the TIA and the aircraft was stabbed near to the runway and the international airport remained closed for the three days. And we became isolated for three days from the rest of the world by keeping in that mind Okay, we have dreamed up and uh, the decentralization of the international airport. Okay, so that's why uh, south part is the Bhairava, there is the Gautam Buddha international airport and the west part that's is the Pokhara international airport. And we have, we have the thinking in that way. So that the demand of the passenger will, that will cater, that will grasp by the development of the, this international airport. Yes, but problem is what here, on 16 May 2022, we made the inauguration of the Gautam Buddha International Airport. Since that date and uh, till today, okay, there is the only one scheduled flight of the Royal Nepal Airlines okay, from Kuala Lumpur to Bhairava, Bhairava to Kathmandu. And uh, in that period, the Kuwait private carrier Jazeera Airways, uh, they have operated uh, some, kind, some flight Okay, they operated the flight. Now they are planning to reoperate the flight also. Uh, that is the one good part. And the second thing, okay, regarding the Pokhara International Airport, we inaugurated on the first January 2023. And after that one, so far we hadn't witnessed a single so, scheduled yeah. flight. Okay, although the international charter flight and other different types of flight they are happening there. Okay, but problem is what in which target? Okay. The keeping that object, we have the uh, 
the civil aviation authority have planned to distribute the traffic of the TIA to the Gautam Buddha and the Pokhara. Okay. But the things are not happening in that way. Because so, so what do you think is uh, the problem why the we haven't had international airlines opting for Bhairava or Pokhara? So I am coming to that point, okay. So why the things are not happening over there as per the expectation of the government? Mean? First of all, the airport are related to the socio-economic status of the that part, that city, okay. Kahando is the, it is federal capital, okay. Many things are available here and many people are living here. Their family members are living here. Many facility visa, passport, okay, level permission and all the traveling facility they are available here. So that's why they want to come here, they stay and they depart from here and they want to arrive here to meet their family because their family are also here, okay. And all the health, all the education, all the employment, all the facility are they are concentrated to the, they are centralized to the Kahandu, okay. Now, regarding the Bhairava and Pokhara, okay, although we had developed the runway, the Bhairava International Airport have the same kind of the runway like the TIA, that is also Phoi code, yeah, it have the also 3000 meter, uh, 3000 meter length and uh, it have the 45 meter width, same kind of the as for the dimension and Pokhara is the slightly smaller airport as for the topography of the Pokhara, but why we are not getting, why we are not uh, getting our anticipation, okay, why we are not fulfilling our anticipation mean, the Pokhara and the Bhaira should be developed also as the independent city, in case of the tourism facility, in case of the travel facility, in case of the visa facility, in case of the medical facility, okay, when Pokhara and the Bhaira will be developed as the independent city, the focus the migration of the people will be at the Pokhara and the Bhairava, okay. And the people in that day, the people should not necessarily come to the Kathmandu for any kind of the travel planning, any kind of the travel documents. At that day, when both the cities will be dependent for the all kind of the government formalities, at that day, there may be the one kind of the market will be created there and the airlines will tend to have the flight from the Bhairo and the Pokhara. Now, in spite of doing okay, we are we have made the different kind of the discount, different kind of the waiver for the Bhairo and the Pokhara. But airlines are not attracting. Why? Because they are not confident about the commercial part of the Gautam Buddha International Airport and the Pokhara International Airport. It will take the time. As for the ACI, Airport Council International, to look the commercial viability of the international airports, we have to for, we have to wait at least 10 years. And to look the commercial viability of the domestic airport, we have to wait at least 5 years. Yeah? Yeah. So, now everything is okay. And our expectation is the too early, but there is nothing will happen by our early expectation. If the things will happen as per the schedule, okay, because the people are wanting the air transportation. And if the people facility and all the government facility will be sufficient at the Bhairava and the Pokhara, I hope civil aviation authority is also hopeful that Pokhara and the Bhairava will be also one of the key factor to scatter, to distribute the centralized traffic of the Tribune International Airport. So also another issue that uh, Nepal civil aviation faces is in terms of safety. Yeah. Uh, with the European uh, countries, the European ban on Euro ban on our on our aircraft, on our aviation. What is the civil aviation doing in terms of this factor? Uh, how are we looking at improving safety or talking to uh, the Euro? Yeah, I, I, I should clear, okay, this one. As a civil aviation authority, okay, before that one, uh, from 1957 to 1998, we are working as the Department of Civil Aviation. That is the, the aviation regulator of the Nepal, okay, which is overseeing the all the aviation re regulating aspect, okay. After the 1998, after getting, after the promulgation of the Civil Aviation Act, uh, we got transformed from then Department of Civil Aviation to now authority. Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal. And basically, Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal, as a regulator, we have the two obligations. 
one is the domestic obligation one is the international obligation as international obligation after becoming the signatory of chicago convention on 29 july 1960 after rectifying the chicago convention uh, we are compiled or we endorsed all the concept and all the basic safety and the security norms of the chicago convention and prime responsibility of the civil aviation authority is to ensure the safety and the security protocols regulation within the country on behalf of the international civil aviation organization okay that is the one and our next obligation is the internal obligation internal obligation is to make as per the guideline of the international civil aviation organization we have to framework the different regulatory guidelines for the airport airlines different trading organization when they all are commonly called service providing organization and uh, on the basis of these on the basis of the we should framework the state safety policy ssp and a uh, state security program safety is one part security is sure. one part and uh, to get okay to achieve the goals of the state safety program and uh, national civil aviation security program we have to ensure the implementation of the safety and the security inside the nepal through the different regulation through the different protocol through the different regulatory guidelines we have to ensure the internal safety and the security as a, and a, we are responsible and a, we are um, we have the one kind of the um, oversight uh, um, oversight authority for that one that is our internal internal obligation and externally on behalf of the icao to make the interact to make the um, one kind of the optimum compliance of the international security standard international safety standards on behalf of the icao we are also responsible for that one so regarding this one and uh, if the airlines are running in the good way or no if the service provider whether they are running whether they are operating in the as per our standard safety protocol and no and we are responsible to have the audit of that one that is called safety audit means we used to have the safety audit of our service provider in the regular basis or periodic basis that is one thing second thing and international civil aviation organization used to have the audit of can yeah. whether can is doing, his job. doing the business as per the international standard or no why this happened i mean before 1999 this was not there why it was happened after 1999 mean this civil aviation is the international nature okay if there may be the safety is compromised in the nepal if the aircraft is departed from nepal to the doha then safety of the doha will be under that will be under suspicion okay that may be the under consideration so see, international civil aviation is the, this is the global nature this is the global network so globally there should be the uniform application uniform implementation of the international safety standard to ensure that one international civil aviation organization icao used to have the safety audit and a security audit over us the international civil aviation organization started to have the universal safety audit program that is the one kind of the audit of the all the icao contracting states from 1999 and nepal uh, we faced the first safety audit in 2009 if we go to the data of the 2009 at that time out of 100% our implementation rate was 43% and global average was the 59% what is the requirement when at least the implementation rate of the country should be it or above the global average when we are too below the global average global average 59% our rate is the 43% and i how um they had provided the different safety recommendation to us and uh, we throughout the um, throughout the year okay we had uh, made the different kind of the implementation different we have found the different documentation documentation implementation mean different kind of the mean manpower issues we made the human resource we have the implementation on the human resources mean we made the many investment a lot of investment to the safety after that one reaching to the 2013 again the icao have uh, they have the they had audited us and that 
at that time we have the 55 percent from 43 to we reached to 55 percent global average was 60 percent again we are below the global average by keeping this thing in the record international civil aviation organization i have listed us in the ssc significant safety concern and by, by following this one european union has also mandatory. keep on the safety list that is not blacklist list many people tell blacklist that is not blacklist that is the safety list okay and uh, by highlighting okay by following the ssc of the icao the european union also listed the nepal in the safety list okay and after that one we had made the tremendous amok regarding the documentation regarding the manpower regarding the training regarding the surveillance and uh, if when we reached to the 2017 again the icao audited to us okay after the after the use of audit we got the result our implementation is the 66.76 percent and the global average is the 60 percent mean okay so we are yeah we are above the global average and by by underlining this result the icao removed us from significant safety concern ssc and at that time then a minister late ravindra adhikari received the icao presidential certificate by honoring the sharp development by nepal from 55 percent to 66.76 percent yes after that one from july 20 2017 july 20 we made out from the ssc of the icao and keeping in mind that okay now we had made the many development there okay many kind of the progress okay a lot of progress made there we thought that we will be out from the safety list of the eu also but things not happened as that way okay okay because there are the different concerns and uh, basically okay i want to clear one thing we are the member of the icao we do concern what the icao does we don't concern what eu does us because eu is the regional block okay although there may be the airbus is there different manufacturing aircraft is there they might have their own concern as a sovereign state as a sovereign country we do oblique to the icao regulation not eu regulation okay because if the eu listed as per the True. list of the ssc when icao out from the ssc okay icao That's made true. out from the ssc the eu should also made out from the safety list okay but it uh, cannot happen like that way again the audit was done in 2022 at that time now recently the nepal implementation is the 70 percent yeah okay. that is far above than the global approach but we so still. far we are listed on the eu safety list why i don't know many times they came here in the 2023 20, they also came they make the observation because we don't tell that uh, we don't say that as the audit the doing audit is only equal. is the only one ica authority okay the eu and other countries they can just have the observation there their assessment there okay and um, the latest uh, report of the eu esa they have the one agency that the esa european aviation safety agency uh, their agency revealed that okay we are still under the safety list of the european union what they have point out we are trying our best we have developed the safety policy quality policy yeah i don't say all the things we 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 are perfect on the, all the <coughs> things okay but one thing is there whatever be the documentary progress whatever be the official progress yeah return return progress but the part of the accident is that is always okay thrusting us to rebuild okay that is just one of the negative part to remain on the safety list and uh, we are trying our best from the man machine and the method to improve the any three aspects of the aviation so that we will minimize the accident and if the accident will be minimized surely it will be the day we will out from the safety list in the domestic uh, aviation we've had a number of uh, unfortunate incidents yes and uh, I believe there's been now a new rules have been brought in by uh, the civil aviation. Yeah. Would you like to speak about that? 
in, especially with the domestic the last air crash that happened yeah i mean um, this is very i mean um, one kind of the disappointing okay this is uh, uh, one kind of the i am not happy to say okay that uh, started from 1949 to now 2024 there's already passed the 75 years um in the span of the 75 years we witnessed the uh, around 110 accidents domestic internationals fixed wing rotor we witnessed the 110 accident and 965 people they became the victim as a fatalities of those accidents so this is very sorry to say okay but why what we can means if the accident happened that happened we have to accept the reality okay there may be the many causes of the accidents because as per the annex 13 of the international civil aviation as per the article there are the 96 article of the sigao convention the article 26 speaks about the investigation of the any one occurrence okay simply i will say there are the first thing is in the aviation is the any hazard if there is any one which probable to create the any accident that is called hazard hazard creates the risk if the hazard creates the risk if the risk is not mitigated that leads to the incident incident means there may be the some kind of the operational operational efficiency of the aircraft or airport will be compromised there that is incident if the incident is not checked that will lead to the serious incident if the serious incident is also not uh, checked that will lead to the accident and that is the final that is the one kind of the fatal means the one accident before happening one accident so there much. are happening the thousand of occurrences if the thousands of occurrences are not checked by the concerned stakeholder I mean they mean the pilot engineer airline airport then authority I mean they are not checked by the those all stakeholders I mean ultimately it is the accident I mean accident directly not happen there are the many contributing factor for the accidents okay out of the 965 fatalities and 110 accidents after the accidents as per the sigao convention they should made the one independent investigation of it okay um uh, although it is not happening in the nepal the government is making the one kind of the such temporary kind of the investigation authority it should be the permanent authority and the one kind of the autonomous authority should be there yeah uh, because that's main target is not to have the investigate after the accident its main target is to stop the re occurrence of the such kind of the similar nature of the accident which were happened earlier so if we go through the all kind of the recommendation of the those all the in investigation commission one thing is common there that is the human factor i already told man machine and a method if there is, there may be the balance between the man machine and a method the aviation is the system of the man machine and a method man is means there may be the engineer pilot air traffic controllers managers regulator or man method mean the method the guiding principle of the icao regulator airlines machine mean aircraft aircraft should be airworthy method should be that is the compatible that should be the time worthy that should be the concurrent and next is the man man should be competent out of these three things we are, we used to say the cell model s s e l l cell mean software in the aviation a man is surrounded by the software yes mean hardware software mean principle hardware mean any machine aircraft maybe other thing e mean environment again l mean liveware mean i may be surrounded by the all my colleague they are also factor to influence the safety if the all the cell all the factors will be in the good way the safety of the concerned sector will be enhanced so means why i am highlighting this thing means different kind of the regulation different kind of the things okay which aircraft are flying in the europe same aircraft are flying here okay which method is there same method is here I mean out of the all the accidents what is the cross there I mean what is the conclusion I mean we are not honoring 
the principle we are not honoring the guideline. Simply let me explain, okay. We have our flight. They are not allowed to enter into the cloud. If the pilot is flying in the VFR, there may be the 5,000 meter visibility should be there ahead. And a right and a left, there may be the laterally, the aircraft should be clear from the cloud 1,500 meter. Vertically, from 300 meter, the cloud should be clear. If there is not guarantee, the aircraft should divert or make the land, landing at the nearest suitable airport. But here in the Nepal, maximum aircraft accidents are happening by the violation of the safety rules. Not entering the cloud mean they are entering the cloud. Okay. If there is weather is not clear, they are entering into the cloud, they are entering into the mountain and there is the CFIT, control flight into the terrain. Okay. If the visibility is the zero there, the pilot right. cannot judge because they are the behalf of traffic. There is no instrument based rule. I mean, the, the, there may be the collision with the mount, there is maybe the collision with the hill, there may be the strike to the hill. I mean, majority of the accident in uh, Nepal are happened by the violation of the safety rule. We do request to each and every airliner, each and every airman, okay, please respect the law because laws are made after the long way of the investigation. Okay, they are not made all over the night. If the visibility is the 5,000, 5,000 means 5,000, not 4,000. Okay, if the 4,000 will be the okay, why keep 5,000 meter? So, human factor, okay. Human is the so complex. I go, I, when I go, go through the different investigation report, okay. If there is the cause is written a human factor, I became terrified because human is the such complex factor, human is the such complex Okay, live word, you cannot guarantee yourself, okay. What will happen tomorrow? What you like today, you cannot like tomorrow, okay. So this is so complex. Whatever the training, whatever the kind of the refresher training, whatever kind of the other skill we made there, okay, we have developed there. But whenever you are flying in the sky, if you haven't made, if you cannot make the good decision on the, if don't have the situational awareness at that time, all the training will be white, all the training will be meaningless, okay. So that's why. We are doing from our side because civil life no, sector is the one kind of the, this is the one system, okay. This is no industry. This is not just like the production of biscuit and uh, other noodles, okay. Because if one is doing well, result will be well. Because if the authority is doing work, authority is yeah. serious. In the same sentiment, the airline should perform. In the same sentiment, the pilot should perform. The engineer should perform. Yeah. So the system should be enhanced by making the realization in the own way and uh, we should take the responsibility to its part and uh, we should not hesitate because in the coming days what the civil aviation authority is having commitment that no one should be the news of the air accident because air accident is regarded to one of the safest mode of the transportation. Why it is going to be the unsafest mode? I mean we are we are over we are overlooking some factor there may be the surely, okay, something is escaping here. So that's why as an authority, we are giving the regular direction to the airlines. And now you talked about the new laws after the accident. After the accident, we make the mandatory provision of the BFR. There is no special provision of BFR, okay. Mean if there are the helicopters, they must comply the BFR rule. If there is the BMC, only aircraft are allowed to fly. Otherwise, do not enter into the cloud, okay. And during the monsoon period, we have stopped all the unnecessary flight because usually in the Nepal, from 30 June to 2nd October, there is a monsoon period of the 112 days. Now, uh, tomorrow it is the regular when the Department of Hydrology and Metrology declared Declares. the onset and the withdrawal of the monsoon during that period, we stopped all the unnecessary flight, all the low level flight, ceiling flight, mm -hmm. flower showering flight, I mean these all flight stopped. And uh, we made the, we required the, all the airlines that, please, first of all, you should be responsible, okay, make your pilot responsible, engineer responsible, by the one mistake of the, your single company, all the Nepal's aviation is going to be in the bad book, okay, that is in the red list, in the black list. So, please, don't do that one, we are, initially we are requesting, and we are making the enforcement against those which are violating the safety rule on the ground, also on the air. So we will expect 
that civil aviation will be monitoring more closely because I think the rules were there. They should not fly into the clouds, but they have been flying. Yeah. So what kind of uh, assurance we have that civil aviation will take strict action now and ensure that they are following these rules? First of all, regulation is the mental aspect. Okay. I will give one example to you. You are going to give the trial of any driving. Okay. Before reaching to the trial center, you have the same skill. When after passing the trial, you have the mental confidence. Your skill level is the same, but you have the mental confidence. I mean, why I am highlighting this one? I mean, ultimately, I am not blaming the pilot. Okay. Ultimately, if you are driving the car, the braking, the braking action is in your control, right? By thinking me, the braking is not possible. You have to execute the braking action. That's why it will happen. It will stop the car. Okay. Like the same way, whatever rules and the regulation ICAO made, ICAO has made, civil aviation has made, airlines has made, ultimate authority, ultimate the character, ultimate the means the is the pilot. Whenever you are flying in the sky, your company owner, he cannot realize the actual situation facing. Yeah. The ground staff, they cannot yeah. realize the actual situation, what pilot is facing in the air. So, the responsibility and the self-realization concept and a self-regulation concept should start from the airman, from the airmanship, from the pilot. Okay. So, means think before. We always said to the pilot, your first mistake is the last mistake. There is no any time for the recovering your mistake. Your first mistake will be the last mistake. And your responsibility is not to save that aircraft. Save the aircraft, save the passenger, save your airline and save the whole industry of the Nepal. Okay, Because when any accident happens, there is no name of the airlines. Okay, We don't care which airlines witness the accident. I mean, accidents happen in the Nepal, happen in the Nepalese sky. Okay. That is the such kind of the bad omen of, of, for the national economy also. Because after having the accident to the Pokhara and a different area, people don't want to play. Okay, immediately after having the accidents, there is a sharp decrease in the air traffic. Means, I mean, this is the I mean mentally, the people are not satisfied to us. Why? Where we are lacking? Where we are compromising? So, in that way, we have made the regulation. Means, as you have told already, making regulation is sufficient. I mean, authority is only limited to making the regulation. No, not that way. We make the certification, we make the regulation, we make the enforcement, and we make the also guardianship also. Yeah, because always in the airlines, there should be the balance between the safety and the production. That is called production and the protection should be balanced. But ICAO principle is the first that. There are the five principles of the ICAO. First principle is the safety is first. If the safety is ensured there, there will be the commercial viability. There may be the increase in the demand of the passengers. There may be the increase of the, your load. But if there is no safety, okay, by having the two, three days flight full, it will not happen for the one month for the years. Okay. So that's why, I mean, from the regulator side, surveillance is increased now. On-site surveillance is increased. Compliance surveillance is increased now, and regulatory action are they are being taken against those violators. Okay, we are making a stick because I again reiterate the thing by making the silly mistake of any one guy, that the is you, me, or anyone. Okay, the people should not die under the air accident. This is our basic line. This is our baseline of the. This is the threshold of the civil aviation authority. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.